now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear to me, O God, are your friends. I hold them in the highest honor. O Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Dear to me, O God, are your friends. I hold them in the highest honor. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty God, who inspired your servant Luke the physician to set forth in the gospel the love and healing power of your Son, graciously continue in your church this love and power to heal, to the praise and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second letter to Timothy. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Do your best to come to me soon, for Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful in my ministry. I have sent Tychicus to Ephesus, when you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books, and above all the parchments. The word of the Lord. Their word has gone out into all lands, and their words to the ends of the earth. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows forth his handiwork. Alleluia, alleluia. I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. <clears throat> Jesus, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Uh, I want to try out a couple of ideas on you that I've had about this. So they're not completely formed. There's more of a meditation than sort of eternal verities to take away and structure your life around. But uh, things that I find fascinating in that expression, today these, these things, have, this, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. So the first that I want to talk about is today this scripture has been fulfilled. I mean, it has and it hasn't. They're doing what we're doing. They're, they're nice people sitting in church hearing the Word of God proclaimed. I certainly don't want to suggest that there's anything wrong with that. If we don't gather to worship together, 
how will we ever be able to assign appropriate value to everything else that we do in our lives? How will we even understand what it is that we do in the rest of our lives? So clearly there was a reason why they came together and it was important. But if you look at what Jesus is saying, the things that he's talking about doing, proclaiming good news to the poor, release to the captives, returning sight to the blind, they weren't doing that stuff in that moment. In fact, that was really what he had been doing all the time before he got there and indeed was going to continue to do after he left. It's what he did two streets down on the corner when he was walking to the synagogue there that morning. And yet, I, I wonder what, what they made of that, whether in fact, y you may know that the, the, the difficulty with this story is that almost as soon as we end the passage that we heard this morning, they all get mad at him and try to run him out of town partly because they don't seem to get what he's saying and they don't seem to want to believe what he's saying. I wonder if part of that is because when they hear him talking about these things, they're thinking, well, are we doing those things? Because the truth is, if all we do is this part, gather to worship and hear, not much is going to happen in the world unless we take those things out of here and do them. How much are we proclaiming good news to the poor, release to captives, sight to the blind, bringing those things into the world, the, the sort of tangible, if you will, virtues of, of, of justice and mercy and healing and reconciliation. <clears throat> so they are fulfilled only to the extent that we hear them and then take them and do something with them. That, I think, was a hard message for them, and it's a hard message for us because sometimes it's a whole lot more comfortable to sit and listen than it is to get up and go do. So I would, it's not entirely surprising that they get angry with him and don't want to hear any more from him, this guy who's supposed to be from their hometown whom they already know. So fulfilled in your hearing is perhaps a challenge to us as much as it was to them. The second piece is that in your hearing part, fulfilled in your hearing. Now we know realistically what that means when the translation says that. It's, you, you know it now because I just told it to you. But I wonder if maybe there's more hidden in it than just that. You know that in Judeo-Christian thought, down through the centuries, certainly until almost modern times, we have had a very clear understanding that the Word of God has creative power. If you read Genesis, God speaks the universe into being. Let there be light. There is something about the speaking of these words, the speaking of justice, the speaking of mercy, the speaking of healing and restoration that brings them into being. I wonder if there's also something about that in the hearing of them. If when the Word of God, Jesus, come among us, speaks these words into our ears and into our hearts, there is a beginning of making them happen in us and through us. So whether being fulfilled in our hearing is also partly about the way that God continues to create these things in each one of our souls. And through us, as I said in the first part, brings them, into, brings them into the world, brings them into being, actualizes them in the way that we try to do those things among the people we meet, among the people we care for, among the people we care about. So perhaps there's also a, a prediction in this. Not simply that this has been said and therefore now you know it, but rather, it has, the seed has been planted. Each one of us has been uh, made ready in some way to do these things by the fact that God has created this reality in each one of us simply by our hearing these words that are powerful, words that are creative, words that make something happen as much as they describe something that is already happening. So once again, you can see why they would get all stirred up. You can see why this might have been something that created conflict in them, that new energy that had been placed 
in their hearts. I wonder how often we come to church and we say these things in nice church voice and then go away and they have no effect on us. You know, maybe they have been fulfilled in our hearing as well. Maybe today we will be stirred up to go out and do something about them. Amen. <clears throat> now let us pray. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, Holy, Blessed, and Glorious Trinity, from all evil and mischief, from pride, vanity, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all evil intent. From sloth, worldliness, and love of money, from hardness of heart and contempt for your word and your laws. From sins of body and mind, from the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil. in all times of sorrow, in all times of joy, in the hour of death and at the day of judgment. Hear our prayers, O Lord our God. Govern and direct your holy church, fill it with love and truth, and grant it that unity which is your will. Give us boldness to preach the gospel in all the world and to make disciples of all the nations. Enlighten Kevin, our bishop, and all who minister with knowledge and understanding that by their teaching and their lives they may proclaim your word. <clears throat> Give your people grace to hear and receive your word and to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Yes. I ask your continuing prayers for our sister Kristen as she continues her discernment of vocation. Bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived. Yes. Strengthen those who stand, comfort and help the faint-hearted, raise up the fallen, and finally beat down Satan under our feet. Guide the leaders of the nations into the ways of peace and justice. Yes. <clears throat> and do all our elected leaders with wisdom and understanding. Yes. I ask your prayers for all who are running for public office this year. Bless those who administer the law that they may uphold justice, honesty, and truth. Give us the will to use the resources of the earth to your glory and for the good of all creation. Bless and keep all your people. Bring your joy into all families. Strengthen and deliver those in childbirth. Watch over children and guide the young. Bring reconciliation to those in discord and peace to those in stress. Help and comfort the lonely, the bereaved, and the oppressed. <clears throat> Keep in safety those who travel and all who are in danger. We remember especially Adam, Alex, Annie, Ben, Bob, Bradley, Brett, Brian, Charlie, Christy, Duncan, Grace, James, Jeremy, Joe, Josh, Kagan, Kate, Kathy, Kevin, Luke, Marvin, Matthew, Nate, Nicholas, Stacy, Stuart, T. 
Tina, Troy, Tyler, and Victoria. Heal the sick in body and mind and provide for the homeless, the hungry, and the destitute. Pour out your mercy on all who have been entrusted to our prayers. We remember especially Adele, Andrea, the Archer family, Austin and Chrissy, Barbara, Beth, Bernice, Betty, the Blackman family, Bob, the Brennan family, Brighton, the Carew family, Carl, Carol, Carolyn, Kathy, Cecily, Charles, Charlie, Charlie and Ellen, Chris, Christine, Christine and Eric, Christine and Francis, Chuck and Paula, Claire, Clove and Jamie, Cole, Connie, Court, Dee, Dana, Daphne, Dave, David, Denise, Dennis, Devon, Diane, Elaine, Elmer, Emily, Eric, Aaron, Aaron and family, Flora, Fred, Fred and Lori, Freddie, George, Gina, Giorgio and family, Glenn, the Harrison family, Janice, Jean and Richard, Jenny, Jim, John, Johnny, Judy, June, Karen, Carrie, Kate, Catherine, Kelly, Krista, the Lane family, Larry, Laura, Lisa, Liz, Lorraine, Mike and Martha, Marge, Margie, Maria, Marion and family, Martha, Mary, Marianne and Bob, Matt, Michael, Morgan and family, the Mullins family, Nancy, Pam, Patty and David, Paula, Phil, the Potts family, Renata, the Richardson family, Rick, Ricky, Robert, Roxana, Sarath, Shannon, Sharon, Shirley, Sandra, Sophia and family, Sophie, the South family, Stacy and family, Stephen, Sue, Susan and family, Teresa, Thomas, Vicky, and Wallany. Are there others? <clears throat> Show your pity on prisoners and refugees and all who are in trouble. Forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and turn their hearts. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the peace of Christ, especially those who have gone before us in this church, those we remember today, those who have confessed the faith, and those whose faith to you is, is known to you alone, and grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Blessed are you, O Lord God, ruler of the universe, that we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, O Lord God, ruler of the universe, that we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For in the multitude of your saints, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us and together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.